Free agency completely changes the landscape of professional sports. When a player's contract is up, he can go to any team and drastically alter the balance of power in the league. The NFL is no different. All it takes is one crazy deal and all of a sudden, the landscape of the NFL looks entirely new. And this isn't just when a team signs a great player a la Tampa Bay bringing Tom Brady into the fold. We've also seen quite a few franchises completely capsize their Super Bowl hopes before the season even starts. So, let us take a look back throughout the years at 10 of the craziest NFL free agent deals that we've ever seen. Number 10, Jacksonville Jaguars, Nick Foles, 2019. At the time that the Jacksonville Jaguars inked Nick Foles to a four-year, $88 million contract, there seemed to be a pervasive skepticism among NFL fans about the Jags' hopes that Foles could replicate his Super Bowl MVP performance across an entire season. Considering that Foles spent the better part of his career with the exception of his stunning 2013 campaign and the equally stunning Super Bowl run as a backup fringe starter type of guy, the deal just seemed like a rather risky gamble, especially considering the first time that Foles cashed in on that aforementioned 2013 campaign he was unable to duplicate his success the following year. In this case, we never really got a chance to see what he could have done in Jacksonville. Full suffered a broken clavicle in the first game of the season, and upon return, just struggled to regain his form. When all is said and done, his tenure with the Jaguars is only one season. And then he was traded to the Bears, leaving the Jaguars with significant dead money against their cap and unfulfilled expectations. Number 9. Philadelphia Eagles, DeMarco Murray, 2015 2014 was a heck of a year for DeMarco Murray. The Dallas Cowboys built their offense around the burly running back, and man did he eat. Murray led the league in yards with 1,845 and touchdowns with 13, and route to a first-team All-Pro selection and AP Offensive Player of the Year honors. Following a record-breaking season with Dallas, the Cowboys division rival Philadelphia Eagles decided that it was time to make a move and signed Murray to a five-year, $42 million deal. Uh, Unfortunately for the Philly faithful, past performance was not indicative of future success. The DeMarco Murray experience went south fast in the city of brotherly love. Murray never really fit into the offensive scheme that the Eagles were running at the time, and just had a hard time getting anything going. Furthermore, it turned out that the Cowboys had really run him into the ground the year prior, as Murray carried the ball a league leading an astronomical 392 times. The former All-Pro saw his yards per attempt drop from 4.7 in 2014 to 3.6 with the Eagles in 2015. And, well, he ended up losing his starting job midway throughout the season. Murray finished with just 702 yards and six touchdowns during his lone season in Philadelphia, marking one of the craziest free agent deals gone wrong in recent memory. Number 8, Seattle Seahawks, Matt Flynn, 2012. To say that the sample size was small for Matt Flynn prior to the Seahawks inking him to a deal that was sizable for the time and a player of his status would be a massive understatement. In fact, it was really just one record-setting game that he had with the Packers that allowed the perennial backup quarterback to actually cash in. In the final game of the 2012 NFL season, Flynn was slotted in for Aaron Rodgers, as the then 14 and 1 Packers were resting key starters in a meaningless game against the Detroit Lions. And, well, Flynn sees the moment chucking the ball all game to the tune of 480 passing yards and 6 touchdowns, including a last-minute game winner to Jermichael Finley to seal the victory. The media ran with the story, and the Seahawks bought it hook, line, and sinker. Flynn signed a nice-sized deal with the Seahawks, but was quickly overtaken by third-round draft pick Russell Wilson as the starter during training camp. Number 7, Detroit Lions, Scott Mitchell, 1994. Prior to Jared Goff and Matt Stafford, the Detroit Lions' attempts at finding a franchise quarterback was a comedy of errors. A great example of this was the decision to sign Scott Mitchell to a multi-year deal after he had the tiniest bit of success with the Miami Dolphins. He started just seven games for Miami in 1993, where he completed 57.1% of his passes for 1,773 yards and 12 touchdowns to eight INTs. Decent, but not exactly anything that would or should scream, build your franchise around this guy. Though he did have one good season with the Lions in 1995, the rest of his career in Detroit went just about as expected, as Mitchell was plagued by inconsistency consistency and was overall underwhelming. 
Number 6. New York Jets Neil O'Donnell, 1996 The New York Jets at least had their sights set on a guy who was able to lead the Steelers to the Super Bowl in Neil O'Donnell, rather than a part-time starter like Scott Mitchell. Either way, though, the end result ended up being alarmingly similar. After O'Donnell's aforementioned Super Bowl appearance with Pittsburgh, he signed a big, at least at the time, five-year $25 million contract, and it went just about as bad as it could have. Admittedly, he did battle some injuries during his first season and made just six starts, but when he was out there, it wasn't pretty. O'Donnell and the Jets ended up losing all six of his starts, and the quarterback was given the boot from the Jets after playing just two years in New York. Number 5. Philadelphia Eagles Namdi Asamoah, 2011 As a collective, the 2011 Philadelphia Eagles were one of the most disappointing teams that the NFL has ever seen. They were loaded with big names all over the roster and underperformed magnificently. Of all the perpetrators, Namdi Asamoah might be the absolute worst. When the Eagles signed him to a 5-year $60 million deal, he was considered to be one of the best cornerbacks in the league. He had a stunning level of athleticism to match his frame and could shut down opposing wideouts with the best of them. Unfortunately for the Eagles, Asamoah's performance dramatically declined almost immediately after he signed that five-year contract with them. Wonder if there was any correlation there. After failing to live up to that lockdown corner reputation that he had built up with the Raiders prior to his time in Philly, Asamoah quickly fell out of favor with Eagles fans, then management, and then he was released after just two seasons, marking one of the worst free agent acquisitions that we have ever seen. Number 4. Houston Texans Brock Osweiler, 2016 the Brock Osweiler Odyssey in Houston was a puzzling one. There were some expectations for him after he looked decent during his spot starts for an aging Peyton Manning in Denver the year prior, but let's face it, that Broncos team was loaded with talent on both sides of the ball. Granted, he went 5-2 during those seven starts, completing over 61% of his throws and generally protected the football, but again, that was a Super Bowl-ready squad. It's hard to believe that anyone in the Houston front office seriously thought that it would be a good idea to sign the lanky quarterback to a four-year, $72 million contract, or that he would be able to improve upon or at least replicate the already modest performance that he had in Denver. But alas, they did. Osweiler struggled massively, completing just 59% of his passes for 2,957 yards and 15 touchdowns to 16 interceptions. The tape, truthfully, was worse than the counting numbers. He looked completely out of sorts and unable to orchestrate a professional offense. Shortly after the season's conclusion, Houston decided that they had seen enough and shipped him out of town at a massive loss, eating up dead cap money and having to tack a second round draft pick on him to get anyone to absorb his contract. Yeesh, talk about a crazy bad free agent signing. Not only did it waste an entire season for Houston, but also a second rounder. Number 3. Dallas Cowboys Mike Vanderjack 2006 There was a time, long before the Justin Tucker era, that Mike Vanderjack was the cream of the crop in the NFL when it came to kickers. He broke into the NFL at 28 with the Indianapolis Colts and kicked for them for 8 good years. In fact, at the time that Dallas inked Vanderjack to this dubious contract, he was statistically the most accurate kicker that the game had ever seen. Now, there was some inherent advantages that he had, as he played in a dome in Indy and was a part of that high-powered Peyton Manning-led Colts offense offense, meaning that there weren't a ton of high pressure or long distance kick that he really had to make. But come on, we're talking about the most accurate kicker in NFL history at the time. The Cowboys thought that adding Vanderjack was a can't lose proposition. Though it is worth noting that there were some red flags from his time in Indy. You see, after a playoff loss in 2003, Vanderjack ripped the Colts head coach Tony Dungy and Peyton Manning, which ultimately resulted in Manning calling him an idiot kicker who got liquored up and ran his mouth. Either way, his time in Dallas and that decision to give Vanderjack a $2.5 million signing bonus and another eight hundred grand in salary as a free agent were ultimately disastrous. Vanderjack was cut midseason due to poor performance, as he hit just a hair over 70% of his kicks and never played another snap in the NFL. Number 2. Oakland Raiders Larry Brown, 1996 Larry Browns is a name that'll go down both in the record books and in infamy for different organizations, as he embarked on a tumultuous journey from being named Super Bowl MVP with the Dallas Cowboys to a lucrative deal and ultimately massively disappointing deal with the Raiders. Brown was beloved in Dallas for securing two interceptions off of Steelers QB Neil O'Donnell, helping the Cowboys to win in Super Bowl 30. But he could never really recreate that magic with the Raiders. In fact, it didn't take long until opposing teams were regularly targeting the defensive back that was supposed to be their shutdown corner. 
Brown's challenges on the field were compounded by injuries and off-the-field issues, further limiting his impact and availability for the Raiders. Then, after two disappointing seasons, the Raiders had enough and cut Brown. Despite the fact that he had played just 12 games for them on a 5-year, $12.5 million deal. A tough scene across the board. You have to think Larry Brown might wish that he never left the comforts of Dallas for a payday and the path unknown. Honestly, if he had never moved, he could have just gone down as a legend. Number 1. Washington Commanders Albert Hainsworth, 2009 there may never be a free agent signing worse than Albert Hainsworth. Despite his character concerns, folks in Washington were excited about the prospects of bringing him into town, as Hainsworth was coming off back-to-back -back Pro Bowl and All-Pro seasons with the Tennessee Titans, where he recorded a total of 14.5 sacks across the 2007 and 2008 seasons, which is pretty insane for an interior lineman. Unfortunately for the Washington faithful, the excitement came to a screeching halt shortly after he signed that seven-year $100 million contract. Hainsworth's production plummeted, and his effort and commitment were continued continuously questioned. Hainsworth appeared in just 20 games over two seasons with Washington, recording a mere 6.5 sacks, a far cry from his performance with the Titans. What made matters even worse was Hainsworth was eager to blame everyone but himself and regularly clashed with head coach Mike Shanahan and defensive coordinator Jim Haslett, both behind closed doors and in the media. It was always something with Hainsworth, man. He was benched, suspended, all of it, then eventually sent out of town at a massive loss. His signing not only tanked the team's performance, but but put them in a terrible position financially and marked one of the worst free agent deals that we've ever seen. But which of these NFL free agent deals do you think was the craziest? Which do you think was the least ridiculous? Was there anyone that we may have missed? Let us know in the comment section below. If you like this video and learned a thing or two, clicking the like button helps out a ton. And hey, we appreciate it. If this is your first time coming around to TPS though, well, subscribing's a great idea because we put out videos like this every single day. But as always, thanks for watching and we'll see you guys next time.